also on this special day, a day of your grace, a day of your love and mercies upon our lives, we appreciate you and we love you. I will pray that through your intervention in our lives, as all the blessings, as all the miracles be released in the name of Jesus.
was not interested in his negative report but Jesus was interested in his person to save him to help him and to bring him up praise the Lord and then when he said all that it was like Jesus did not hear him but all that Jesus did was he walked up to him and he said pick up your mat and walk Pick up your mat and do what? Walk. And I speak to somebody here this morning. Pick up your mat and walk. Pick up your marriage and go. Pick up your relationship and move. Pick up your business and go. Pick up your life again from the position of frustration and move to the point of, of healing and restoration in the name of Jesus. Some of us, that is our experience. You can no longer put yourself together. You are such that everything about you, all you see is negative, negative, negative. That was a man's situation. Every other person was getting healed, but he was not getting healed. That's why I said delayed word, miracle. He went there for a miracle. He said, while I am on the way, some other person does what? Gets in. You remember the story of Naaman, the army commander who had leprosy and was sent to Israel to be healed. And then he, sent, he was sent to the prophet of God and he got angry. And then the, the, those who had brought him said to him, if the prophet had told you to do something more than this or something harder than this, wouldn't you have done? He says, Go to the pool, to the Jordan, and do what? Wash yourself seven times. And then he obeyed. See the path of obedience. Obedience to God's word, obedience to instruction, obedience to your parents, obedience to your husband, obedience to your wife, obedience to your parents. They bring blessing. And so he obeyed. And when he obeyed, he got healed. And when he was healed, he looked at himself. He could, the joy of it, he could not contain the joy of it. 
he had to go back and fight. He rejoiced. He brought every kind of gift, even though it was rejected by the prophet. And then the servants went to collect that gift. And the resultant effect was that he contracted the leprosy himself and his lineage. But my dear friends, the fact is, just by the spoken word and by the obedience of the individual, there was healing. Amen. But there's something special about this case. And that thing that is special is that while every other miracle took the same path and the same way, he had expected that he be healed like others who get into the water and they get healed. But in his case, it was different. And I tell you, your case will be different. He was expecting to be told to go into the water. But his own was, pick up your mat and do what? And go. You are not getting into the water. But the master of master and the miracle himself will heal you unconditionally. <laughs> Many of us are sick in different forms. But there is a provision God has made. And that provision he has made is getting to know Jesus. Especially in our own time. When Jesus healed this man. The man did not have knowledge of Jesus. He did not know Jesus. Now this is where the compassion of Jesus is. It's that text of scripture says. Sorry the person there can you bring out that scene again. The, it, that text of scripture says there was a festival. There was a festival in what? Jerusalem. And many people had gathered. After this, Jesus went to Jerusalem for a religious festival, a time of celebration near the sheep gates in Jerusalem and there is a pool that pool says has five different areas called what? Bet what? Zata now that word Bet Zata in Hebrew or in Greek means house of mercy house of what? mercy and child of God you are sitting right now in the house of what? mercy the house of God is a place of what? Mercy. And where there is mercy, mercy comes to us unconditionally. Not because we merit it. Ordinarily, many of us are not supposed to step into this thing. Especially when you x-ray yourself spiritually, you discover how deficient you are. But yet, the mercy of God carries us. That's why the book of Lamentations we say the steadfastness of the Lord is ever what? New. They are new every morning. The mercy of God is new and is there for us every day and every moment. On our own, nothing. If we consider ourselves as privileged to be in the presence of God, no, we do not have the qualification. But there, that man was sitting, waiting for his own miracle. Waited one year, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Now, let's take it that this man fell ill, probably at the age of twenty, and then at twenty to thirty-eight, it will give you about what? Fifty-eight. So his life was almost wasted. But that wastage was repaired and re renewed by Jesus at just by his spoken word. There are many of us, our lives seem to be ebbing away. There seems not to be hope. Frustration is all you find around yourself. Child of God, look up to Jesus. He is the one who has the answer. That miracle you've been expecting here and there, the only person that can do that miracle for you and that deliverance for you is Jesus. And when he decides to do it, he does it what? Unconditionally. He spoke to the man and he said, 
pick your mats and go home. And then the man picked up his mats and he went home. Now, this is what somebody said about Jesus. Somebody said, Jesus moves towards need, not comfort. Towards broken-hearted sinners, not the self-righteous. Now, what was this man there doing? He needed to be healed. It was a need for him. He was not seeking for comfort. And so Jesus came and provided the need for him. And he said, pick up your mats and do what? And go home. And then the other one is the fact that this man, though he was not broken in heart, yet God healed him. Jesus healed him. Like somebody describes him, he said he was old. This man was dependent on people. He said, while I am, I don't know how he got to the pool of Bethsaida, where he probably, some persons brought him there and abandoned him there. Let him help himself. And he could no longer help himself. Child of God, I don't know the condition you are. I don't know the circumstance you are. I don't know who brought you to that circumstance that has made you an invalid. But remember, there is only one person who can help you, and that is God. Other people might fail you, but there is someone who will not fail you. Like I said, he became a complainer. He complained about everything. That's why when Jesus asked him simple question, all he started to do was to complain. And then he also turned out to blame everybody. The worst part of it was that he even blamed the person who healed him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When he carried his mat on the Sabbath and was walking and they approached him and said, why are you carrying mat on the Sabbath? You are not supposed to carry mat on the Sabbath. What was his answer? Huh? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What was his answer? The man who healed me said what? I should carry my mat and uh -huh. Some of us are like that. The man who healed me said, I should carry my mat. And he knows that that was the Sabbath. And every Jew knows that you are not supposed to carry anything on the Sabbath day. So he blamed the person who got it. the fact that he disobeyed the law was because of someone else. He did not take responsibility for his action. Do we behave like that? Even when God has blessed us and then problem results from the blessing of God, you will blame who? God. You will not blame yourself for misuse. He said, the man who healed me said, I should carry my mat and go. And he said, that made the people, the religious leaders, more determined to destroy Jesus because Jesus was breaking their rules, the rule of, of, the, of the Sabbath. And so they, they wanted to kill him because of that. And then, this man also was a sinner. And then, the kind of sin that he was living with was such that Jesus could confront him on his sin. But when Jesus appeared, Jesus did not Tell him, my friend, why are you sinning? But Jesus said, pick up your mat and do what? Praise the Lord. Now, this is what somebody said. Somebody said, God can do a miracle, physical miracle for us, when inwardly we are dead. When spiritually you are dead, God can do a physical miracle for you. A physical transformation. But spiritually you are what? Dead. Now through that physical manifestation of God's power on you, then your inner healing can come. And that becomes the greater thing that is more important. Praise the Lord. I don't know. Do you understand what I mean? Huh? 
You know, some of us sometimes we think it's because of sin, 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 sin. That is why I'm suffering what I'm suffering. Now, sometimes God overlooks the sin and does something for you. My people will say, Okay, I have a child. Somebody you are helping who is killing you. You are helping somebody, but the person is doing what? Killing you. You overlook that thing and still do what you are supposed to do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, let me just give you a practical example. When my mom died in 2014, one of my cousins, right now, and for some time I've been training the children in school. My mom died. He came out and was laughing at my brothers and my sisters in the village. Say, hey, door, your mother has died. Open. I'm not telling you story. And said, if my mother did not die, is it good that we die? That was a statement from such a person. My cousin. But I'm training the children in school. I don't know if you are you getting what I'm saying. So now this man was a sinner. That's why when Jesus returned to him, Jesus said, Now you are well. Make sure you do not what? Make sure you do not what? So that what? Something worse will not what happen to you. So now this is when Jesus is calling him to repentance. Check yourself. Check yourself right now. That thing you are enjoying, that favor you are enjoying from God, check yourself. Do you merit it? Eh? You don't merit the favor, but God has given it to you. Why? He extends a hand of fellowship to you to draw you closer. And even at that, the man, even when Jesus had said that to him, he became ungrateful. He was ungrateful. When Jesus finished saying that to him, he ran off. He did not even say thank you. What did he do? He ran off and went to tell the religious leader, okay, okay, I have not the man who cured me. His name is what? His name is what? Jesus. Call his name. Jesus. Everybody, call his name. Jesus. Call his name. Jesus. Call his name. Jesus. Let him answer you. Yeah. The man who healed me is what? Oh, Jesus. He's the one that healed me. He's the one that told me to carry the man. Reporting Jesus to the authorities, not that he testified. In John's Gospel, chapter 9, the man who was made blind, when they met him and said to him, what do you think about Jesus who had opened your eyes? He told them, I don't care about what you think about him, whether he was a sinner or not. All I care is that I was blind, but now he has made me to do what? See. But this one went to report Jesus. And then he said, on the strength of that, they were determined to kill Jesus. He was ungrateful. Like the ten lepers who were cleansed, they came back I think one or two of them came back to thank Jesus. God expects thanks and appreciation from us. How many times have we appreciated the Lord? But when he forgives us one sin, we commit two. When he forgives the two, we commit five. When he forgives the five, we commit how many? Ten. We progress from sin to sin because we feel his grace is there for us. So we become ungrateful by our attitude. It is our attitude that determines that. And then this man was all repentance. Because there was no indication that he had repented from his sin. If he had repented, he would not have talked the way he talked. But rather, I, 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 I could imagine that man, he just was running to say, Hey, I've seen the person who healed me. Oh. Come and see him. His name is Jesus, and he walked away. Unrepentance. repentance. 
from that again we learn something that God's grace can work miracles without any bit of merit or any or us deserving it. You just look at the person by your side. Just look at him. Eh? How handsome, how beautiful he is. Is he his making that he's handsome or he's beautiful? Is he his making? You know, there are some people that if they sit near you, you will shift. Eh? If I come and sit near my sister, now she will do what? She will shift. You know why? One, I have body odor and smelly, and then my face is what? Ugly. Next day, when I come to church, when she comes to church and notices that I'm coming close, she will change seat and change position. There are some people who you look at them, you see the beauty of God in action, in their life, but they merit nothing for that. If you are a rich man, if God has blessed you with riches, it's not because of your efforts. Did you hear me? If this, it's not because you are too hard working. First of all, if you don't have the gift of life, will you work? If this money they broke the door to bring you out, will you go to markets? You will not go to markets. People will come and they will tell them that you are dead. Amen. But that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Outward miracle or blessing can accompany inner death. Outward blessing, outward miracle of God can accompany inner what? Death. And that was what happened to this man at the pool of Bethesda. God blessed him outwardly. He healed him outwardly. But inside he was already dead. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But when God does that, he uses the opportunity to give you a second chance. And then, when we see circumstances, let us ask discerning questions. Let us ask important questions. Otherwise, if we do not have asked important questions, we will miss it. When you go to, pray, when you go to prayer, when you come here, like we are here, what is that question you are asking God for? What is it you want? God, be straight. Jesus asked him, Do you want to be healed? What did he answer? Huh? Complain. He started complaining instead of telling Jesus what he wanted. And then also, let us also have this God awareness in us. When you do not have God's awareness in you, when you do not have God's awareness in you, your reaction to situations will make you miss your miracle. Tell your neighbor that. When you do not have God awareness, you will miss your miracle. Even when God performs a miracle for your neighbor and your friend, you will not notice. Praise the Lord. The religious leaders were more interested in who made him to be healed. They were more interested in the carrying of the mats on the Sabbath. And so they lost sight of the miracle that was performed in the man's life. So they did not notice the miracle because they were more interested in law, 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 law. God is a breaker of law. God breaks the law of nature when he wants to do something. By the way, God is the giver of the law. God is the owner of the law. And God is also the judge of the law. So, he decides when he wants to twat it, he can twat it. And I pray that this day, this particular day, God will twat the law of nature because of somebody today in the name of Jesus. He twatted the law because of that man on the Sabbath. He walked up and he said, pick up your mat and do what? 
Now, Jesus had the knowledge of this man. I want to speak to somebody now to tell you that that your situation you think that nobody knows, Jesus is aware of it. He is aware of your condition. So stop crying. But rather, arise from where you are to a position of faith and believe in him and you will see answers to the circumstance that you are going through. And then the Lord expects repentance of each and every one of us. That was why when he came back, you see, I want to believe that the Lord was aware that they were querying that man about who healed him. Praise the Lord. And this man needed to give a testimony of his healing. So, Jesus surfaced again. Before, when he finished the him, Jesus was not interested in popularity. Amen. Amen. You see, that's why the Catholic Church were very unique. Jesus healed somebody and disappeared into the crowd. He was not interested in popularity, television, NTA, eh? which one again? Radio. Hey, somebody was healed in Immaculate Hearts and it will be televised the whole world so that people will begin to run. But Jesus he performed the miracle of a sick man for 38 years and he entered in the crowd such that the man could not see him. Any preacher and any minister of God that God uses to do something that proclaims himself, it is I. The other day I prayed for somebody. He got, she got here. The other day I prayed for this person. That one happened. He's preaching himself. Jesus went down. But he surfaced again because this man needed to witness. Everybody say witness. Let me, I don't want to use the word testimony, but rather let me use the word witness. Jesus wanted him to witness for him. Okay? To testify the goodness of the Lord to him. But by that, to bring about conversion of people. To, of, to bring about the knowledge of God in their midst. So that was why Jesus went to him again and said to him. Because at this point, the Lord expected something from him. Repentance. You are well now. Make sure you do not what? Sin again. So that something worse will not what? Happen to you. So the Lord expects repentance of us. And he also expects us to be witnesses. Now, oh, a man called Matthew Henry says this. We are all by nature impotent folks in spiritual things. All of us are imp you know what they mean? When you say a man is impotent, the man is not productive. We are all impotent in spiritual things. We are all blind and then to eat. Praise the Lord. God, all of us, all of us, even for the I'm prone to sickness, I'm prone to sin, I'm prone to anything. You are prone to everything. All of us are blind. We talk about blind Bartimaeus. Many of us are blind. Some of us, Jesus said they will hear and hear and not do what? Understand. They will see and see, but they will not what? Be able to comprehend what he said because we are bereaved of that knowledge. That knowledge can only come from God. And he says, in the midst of these deficiencies in us as human beings, a provision has been made for us. And that provision is in Christ who, Jesus, if we attend to it. How many of us attend to him? How many of us are consistent with him? How many of us relieve our faith in him? How many of us trust him? How many of us surrender to him? How many of us believe that he is able to do it more abundantly than ever than we can ever think of or imagine? How many of us? 
And then sometimes we think that we cannot be sick, we should not be sick. No, sickness will come. But it says provision has been made for us by the Lord. And I pray for you today that the Lord will provide your miracle for you in the name of Jesus. Now like I said the other day, that I thank God for my life, for the gift of my life. And I give him praise and honor. Ordinarily, I should not be alive. I don't, I, I don't think there's anything special I have done to deserve God's gift of life. But today, I thank him for my life and also for those he has put in my life in one way or the other that have contributed to me being alive. And I, that text says, on the day of festival, on the day of celebration, on the day of feasts in Jerusalem, Jesus attended the feast. And I know he is here. And he's hearing me for celebrating and thanking him for the day that I was born as I was told. I was not there. I pray that the newness of my life will affect your own life in the name of Jesus. And as I pray for you today as a priest, I stand on that fresh unction of God's gift of life that that fresh unction will flow into your own life in the name of Jesus. That in your delayed miracles that Jesus will step in and change the circumstance for you in the name of Jesus. There are some of us that our businesses seem to be packing up, packing up, packing up, packing up, packing up. One year, you try to re-strategize, it's not coming. Child of God, look up to Jesus. Under the fact that Jesus attends ceremonies and celebrations, I provoke his presence in this church this morning. That the Lord will locate you in that place of frustration and bring about a relief and restoration for you in the name of Jesus. Why we must seek the face of God is important because when we allow frustration to linger, we are pushed into doing negative things. Frustration led Sarah to go to Abraham to say to him, take my slave girl and sleep with her. And that brought a foreign person into his family because Hagar got a son, Ishmael, who eventually became a thorn in the flesh of the family because of frustration. Many of us, many of you have been led by frustration to put your steps where you will not rather go, but you've gone. That is what frustration, that is why when there seems to be frustration in our lives, we turn to Jesus and we turn to God and we beg him for mercy. We seek for his mercy so that we can be reconnected to the source of blessing that he has come to give to us. There is no hopeless situation when the Lord is involved. When the Lord is involved, there is a glimmer of hope. I tell you this morning, my dear brothers and sisters, that like the man who was only just a complainant, he became a complainer. He blamed everybody. He never knew that he was in the place of his healing. Amen. Amen. Not just in the place of his healing, but rather the person who was speaking to him was the healing itself for him, unknown to him. In that your condition, may that condition become the place of igniting your healing in the name of Jesus. That seeming frustration, God wants to use it to bring out the best in you in the name of Jesus. So when you cry in that condition, do not cry endlessly. Do not cry endlessly. The man was looking for help far away, but the help was near him. That's why... Wow, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sorry, my brother, can I see Psalm 139? Psalm 139. Amen. Amen. 
Psalm 139. It says, Lord, you have examined me and you know me. Praise the Lord. You know everything I do from far away. You understand all my thoughts. I want somebody to say that. From far away. You understand all my thoughts. I don't know what the thoughts you are carrying right now, my dear brother, my dear sister. The cry of pain that is inside of you. The cry of seeming frustration that is inside of you. Does God not hear? Does God not understand? Is God not aware? He is telling you, the psalmist is telling you, God is aware from far away. He's aware of that condition. And then he says, you see, you see me, whether I am walking or resting, you know all my actions. From far away, Jesus saw the man at the pool of Bezatha. Jesus knew his condition and he walked straight to him. He did not look at any other person, but he came for that man because he had seen his condition, that he had no helper, he had nobody to carry him to the water. People asthmated him because it was not his time, but because the Lord remembered him. He came, even before I speak, you already know what I will say. Some of us are here. Before you stepped into this church, God already knows why you are here. He's aware of that situation. He's aware of that circumstance that is making people laugh at you. You are all around me on every side. You protect me with your power. Praise the Lord. Your knowledge of me is too deep. It is beyond my understanding. Child of God, I don't know what you think that is around you and the problem it is. Where it comes from or whatever. Or that there seems to be no escape. Where could I go away from your presence? God is aware of that delayed miracle of yours. And by his spirit, that delayed miracle will be caused to become a miracle for you. In the name of Jesus. And when it happens, those who seem to have been running faster than you will not meet you again. You will meet them and you will pass them. I say you will meet them and you will pass them. The other people waited to enter the water. But Jesus said, pick up your mat and do what? Go home. Be before the person inside the water comes out, he has gone ahead of him. So shall you go ahead of him. So shall you go ahead of them. When the Lord remembers you, you will be ahead of them in the name of Jesus. He is not coming to do something for you so that you will be at the same level. But you shall move ahead in the name of Jesus. And they will stand and wonder why. See, child of God, when the Lord has remembered to lift you from where you are to the position of where he wants you to be, when he places you there, nobody will stop you. I said nobody will stop you. No power again will stop you. No authority again will question you. He was carried, he was carrying the mat on the Sabbath day and he was walking and they came to him. Who told you to carry man? He only kept going and he kept selling them. He said, I should carry my mat and go. The Lord says you should carry that poverty and walk. He says you should walk out of poverty. Poverty will not be by your portion. The Lord says you walk out of that sickness. The time of your healing has come. Walk out and you will tear that sickness behind. I am going. I am going. You cannot hold me back. That frustration that is in your system will be watching you and you will walk out without payments. That was what happened. Because the Lord saw through and through him. Praise the Lord. If you go to the airport and you're traveling overseas, there's a stage of the screening you get. The final stage, you will remove your shoe. You will remove your wristwatch. You will remove belts. Eh? Everything. The only thing you need. 
even the jean you are wearing, if it has buttons, you will see the machine will do pee 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 pee. It will stray you from your head to your what? Inside. If you are carrying cocaine inside, when you cross, they will tell you stay here. Then they will search your back thoroughly. Your God is auto parallel home more. That is the mirror that is the greatest mirror. That was what did happen to the He came. Jesus he said there were many people, many, many, many. See, you are the singular individual the Lord is looking for. He's not looking for everybody. You are that person he's looking for. He just came to a singular person and picked the man and said, Go. When the Lord makes a pronouncement over your head, there will be no resistance. The pronouncement he has made over your head, anybody that arises and says it will not come to pass, let the Holy Ghost fight that person. I say, let the Holy Ghost fight that person. See, the query is the man who told you to walk on the they only they could ask questions. Did they stop him? No. Eh? No. Tell yourself I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. By the fact of my belief in Jesus. Say it. Can I see you stand by the fact of my belief in Jesus? And by the fact that I step my foot onto this ground. Any power that is following me, die in the name of Jesus. Every power of delayed miracle, at this hour, I soak you, I suffocate you in the power in the house of God. Every monitoring authority. The religious, the religious leaders monitored this man to see why he should carry mat on the Sabbath. But he told them, the master of masters, the giver of the law, said I should walk on the Sabbath. And they could just stare at him. They could not arrest him. The military police could not stop him. The Jewish police could not stop him. The Jewish authorities could not stop him. Because you are the child of Jesus, every military police Every spiritual police, every spiritual authority, every spiritual power that is questioning you for being a child of God, let that power be subdued. Begin to speak to that power. Tell the power it does not have authority over you. Tell the person it does not have authority over you. Your master says you should work out. You should work out. That person that is holding your business fortune, that person that is holding your opportunity and questioning why you God should bless you. Does not have the authority to question you. To question why you are who you are. Why you are where you are. God has said Jesus has given the command take your mat and go home. Take your mat and go home. Jesus has spoken a word over your head. Over your business. And somebody is saying in an altar that it shall not be so. Let that altar at this moment we bring that person to the altar of God. We begin to reverse what the enemy has done to keep you on the ground for weeks, for months. That person that is making sacrifice over your head, questioning you. Hey, hey. God has made a pronouncement. Jesus has made a pronouncement. He did not, he broke protocols for this man that he, he, no, it will, you will no longer be lying on the mat. Your life will no longer remain stagnant. It is your time to move. It is your time to move. The month of November is your month to move. A month to walk into your liberation. Your liberation has been declared and it is declared by no other but by Jesus. Jesus declared the liberation of this man. Jesus says, I set you free. 
I set you free. I set you free. I set you free. I set you free. I set you free. I set you free. Park and move. Park and move. Step out of poverty into richness. Step out of sickness into health. Step out from nobody to somebody. Begin to be announced. The Lord says you have been announced. That man was announced. Even in his condition, the Lord announced him. He said, He does not have power. That person does not have power. That person does not have power. Every spiritual battle over your head. Let that battle quench now. 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 now. In the name of Jesus. Child of God, anybody that is pointing finger at you, querying you, why are you disturbing in this place? Tell them that your father is Elohim Elohika. Tell him that your father is the ancient of days. Tell him that your father is a healer of healers, the creator of creators, the pantocrator, the archimedian point of human existence. That is the person that has given you a mandate to move out. One refraff is saying, why are you doing this? Tell him, you are coming from the seat of authority. The seat of authority has powered you to go. In the name of Jesus. Why are you intimidated in the spirit? Who is the person intimidating you in the spirit? Child of God, you have a power to intimidate back. Your father is a lion of the tribe of Judah. And when he comes, when he roars, every other lion goes away. He says, pick up your mats and go home. Pick up your marriage and go. Is your marriage caged? Have they caged your marriage? First year, second year, third year, 38 years. Have they caged your business? Child, many of you, you make efforts. You are not saying it. It's a time to change that story. I say it's a time to change that story. Amen. You see, I want you to do like this. Carry your mat back. Carry your mats. Carry your destiny. Carry your business back. It's been lying down somewhere. Carry it. Bend down and pick up your business again. Pick it up. Carry it like a baby. And guard it. Present it to Jesus on this altar this morning. Say, Lord, I present back my business to you. I don't know the location of your shop. I like you to move to your shop in the spirit. Go there. It doesn't matter the incantation they have made in that environment. Incantation of stagnation. You go to your shop, as you open the shop, you see blood. Blood from where? Hey! Every opening that they are using to drop blood in your shop. Holy Ghost! Fire! Holy Ghost fire. That man that is making sacrifice in a spiritual order and the blood is falling in your shop in Portacot. Hey! Hey! Raise the blood of Jesus! I raise the blood of Jesus! See, child of God, I want you to carry your business to the wounded side of Jesus. Push him! Push your business to the wounded side of Jesus. He said, blood and water flow from the side of Jesus. Let that blood and water flow now. Amen. Let it flow now. Connect your business to the wounded side of Jesus. Now release your blood and water to flow. I provoke a fresh flow 
of blood and water from the side of Jesus upon your business this hour. I connect you to the healing effects of that blood that flowed from the side of Jesus. That shop, you go, you see shit on the floor. At the entrance, sacrifice. Those sacrifices, let them come to nothing in the name of Jesus. Projected covering. Projected covering of business or your life. I don't know the person projecting that. Wherever the projection is coming, they ask the man from a distance. They projected from a distance. And from a distance, he told them, Jesus of Nazareth. And they were silenced. Every spirit speaking against you. Every authority speaking against you. Every altar speaking against you. Every human agent speaking against you. From whatever level of operation, let them be silenced. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tell the Lord, silence them. Silence them. Tell the Lord Jesus, silence them. Tell him, silence them. Let them be silenced. Let them be silenced. Every power, every level of operation, level 333, three, three. level 666, six, six. level 777, seven, seven. level 999. May they be silenced in the name of Jesus. You don't need to care the level of that person. The religious authorities were of the highest order. They queried the man who was healed. And he said, Jesus told me. And they kept silent. Let there be silence in the kingdom of the darkness in the name of Jesus. Every sacrifice that has been made over you and your business, may that sacrifice be counteracted by the sacrifice of the altar we offer this morning on behalf of you in the name of Jesus. But anybody who stubbornly goes back to reanimate the sacrifices they make over your head, known and unknown I say known and unknown the Lord demands repentance and they say they shall not repent let the vengeance of God follow that person anybody human or spiritual I'd like you to lift up your hands that is bent on keeping you by the pool of Bezata by the pool of this or by the side of the pool who does not want you to rise who does not want you to get up let that person be drowned in the name of jesus let that power be drowned in the name of jesus let that power be subdued in the name of jesus let that power be detonated in the name of jesus That man walked out in joy. I pray that this month will be a month of joy for you. I pray that this month will be a month of healing for you. May you be connected to the healing experience of that man who, who was bent for 38 years in the name of Jesus. Your business is mangled. Your family is mangled. See, there is somebody carrying a load. Big load. But the Lord is lifting up that load off you. Let that load be lifted up from you in the name of Jesus. Every load that you are carrying that is not from God, that load has been put on you by human power by dark power by dark authority may that load be dropped in the name of jesus father we offload that load that this hour in the name of jesus the load of poverty of you in the name of jesus we drop the load of death over your business in the name of jesus 
We drop the load of backwardness over your family in the name of Jesus. We drop the load of sickness over you in the name of Jesus. We drop any load, any kind of load that has been prepared to keep weighing you down. One year, two years, three years, four years, five years. You are struggling with a particular situation. Let the Lord bring about transformation.